is. That one went to Blackman, Bobby Blackman. Junior college player out of Alameda, California. You know, all of the receivers for San Jose State were junior college transfers as we take a look at Martini throwing to Blackman. Looks as though one of the Cardinal defenders fell down in pass coverage. There's a lot of people slipping and sliding out there. And obviously, that's why they're changing the cleats on the sideline. But that is enough for a Spartan first down. First down at the level 26. Hand off maybe for a yard or two. Barbosa, Maceo Barbosa, Gangwer was there to make the stop for Louisville. Let's pause five seconds to let our stations identify themselves. Back in San Jose, where Louisville and San Jose State are tied at seven. A fumble by Louisville, and now San Jose State has the ball. It is a second down and about eight to go from the Louisville 25 yard line. Martini is going to be sacked, gets it away anyway. What are they going to call? Because Washington, Ted Washington was in there putting the big time pressure on Martini. You talk about old number 99. I tell you what, he comes off the line of scrimmage on a little twist right there. The center tries to pick him up, but he just swats him aside. And he's got Martini in the grasp. Right there. So that'll bring up third down. Officials have uh, called a timeout. Come over to the sideline. Appears that they are adjusting the clock. Of course, we have. We have uh, two clocks. We have a game clock, and also in the end zone, we have a 25-second clock that they've started. It's now down to 20 seconds, so obviously they had to reset it. Third down and eight. Ten minutes, 22 seconds on the clock in the third quarter in the 7-7 game. San Jose State at the Louisville 25. And Martini with the handoff to Hawthorne, and he gets the first down inside the Louisville 15-yard line before Blackford and Fitzgerald can make the tackle. So that is a first down for San Jose State at the Louisville 14-yard line. Big so blocks up front by Pat Hines, the left offensive tackle, and Chad Emall, left offensive guard for San Jose State, popped that little handoff very quickly up there to Hawthorne, and he picked up a first down for the Spartans. Martini to Canley. And flags are down and whistles are blowing. A legal procedure indicated against San Jose State. A false start, of course, once again. First game of the season. Teams are prone to make a few more mistakes, but... Uh, well, a substitute is coming in. I don't know. Terry Shea said he would take any player out that uh, caused a penalty tonight. He's got a stable of receivers yes, and uh, he's got some, plenty of them. some good running backs. Uh, he did indicate he didn't know if he had enough linemen to take yeah. out should one of the linemen have a procedure or some type of penalty against him. The ball is now on the 19. It is first and 15. Martini to Canley. Flory's out there trying to chase him down and Louisville strings it out and knocks him out of bounds for no gain. McFadden and Ganey were out there to force Canley out of bounds. Good force by Rick, Ricky McFadden, McFadden coming from his strong safety position. Of course, McFadden's older brother played for Coach Snellenberger down in Miami in 1983. Well, Bino just came back into the game. Bino making two of those big plays in the first half when San Jose State was uh, third, second, third, and fourth goal. Second down and 15. Here's a pass to the end zone, incomplete. Intended for Barbosa. And overthrown. Omecio wished that he would have had that one back as Mr. Martini says, why didn't you haul it in? Because he was open. The ball was placed right in the right spot. I guess it hit him in a bad spot, right in the hands. Because it, uh, it could have been six for the uh, Spartans of San Jose State. And instead, it's going to be third down and 15 from the Louisville 19. 
in the third quarter nine minutes and 41 seconds to go. Louisville led this game seven to nothing. 27 seconds in the first half San Jose State scored and tied it. Here is Martini on third down 15 under pressure and down he goes. The Louisville defense throwing their arms up into the air. Mel Mills number 56 in there to help make that stay. And let's watch Ted Washington on this one. The big guy, the senior from Tampa, comes off. Good, good offensive charge. Right straight in, delivers a blow, spins out of the block, slides down the line of scrimmage to make the tackle on Martini. Good and defensive play. And so it is a field goal attempt from the 27, so make it a 37-yard field goal attempt, and flags are thrown. Of course, the guys in blue are pointing at the guys in white. Oh, the guys in white are pointing at the guys in blue. But I tell you what, that guy in the white hat with the stripes, he's going to figure it all out. Well, this could be an important call because with a field goal attempt of 37 yards and a kicker in that had missed one earlier, De La Flor, from just 18 yards out. Watching him in pregame, I did not feel he had a very strong leg. He, he's probably very accurate. He was a soccer player down in uh, 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 Peru. And I don't think he's got that strong a leg. So yes, you're right, David. Could be a very important call. Watch the uh, referee for a signal here. Well, they're calling it on both sides, so they couldn't make up their <laughs> mind which one jumped off first. And now they'll come back from the same spot on fourth down. From the 27, a 37-yard field goal by Ra Raul De La Flor, born in Lima, Peru. Here it is. Right through it. It's good, and San Jose State, for the first time tonight, has taken the lead over Louisville. With nine minutes exactly left in the third quarter, it is San Jose State 10 and the University of Louisville 7. Hi, I'm Tammy. And I'm Steve Bedrosian here with our two sons, Kyle and Cody. My job with the Giants is to come in late in the game, be the stopper, and pick up a save for our team. Recently, Cody was diagnosed with leukemia, and we are here today to ask you to pick up a save of your own by donating to the Cody Bedrosian Fund for Pediatric Cancer Research. You can help fight this disease, which has afflicted thousands of youngsters like Cody. Be a stopper yourself and help stop the spread of leukemia. For information, call the Giants Community Services Office now. Thank you. Sports Channel America is the home of the seven-day weekend. We've got the gridiron covered with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Canadian Football League. The Iceman reign supreme with our exclusive coverage of the National Hockey League. The U.S. Olympic Showcase, High School Game of the Week, Speedway Sunday, the Pro Boxing Tour, and much more. Sizzling professional and amateur sports 365 days a year. The seven-day weekend is here only on the Sports Channel America Network. Beautiful shot here from our crew of just about a full moon as night has fallen in San Jose. And the Spartans of San Jose State continue now to lead the game 10 to 7. Louisville led 7 to nothing. San Jose State tied it right before halftime. And now with nine minutes to go, they lead it 10 to 7 on the field goal by De La Four from 37 yards. Joey Smith is back deep to receive the kick. They have penalized San Jose State. They're kicking from the 20, and so Louisville receives it. Smith takes it in at about the 12, 13-yard line. Comes out over the 30, gets a couple of blocks, and is going to move it out close to the 40, just short of the 40, about the 39-yard line. Joey Smith, the senior out of Knoxville, 5'11", 188 pounds. With a lot of speed, sets Louisville up now in good field position. The scoring drive, 10 plays and 18 yards covered in 2 minutes, 47 seconds culminating in that field goal. And De La Flor, as I mentioned uh, earlier tonight, he was not even on this campus until three weeks ago. He's a walkout and uh, has won the starting job as the place kicker for San Jose State. Well, Browning Nagel is the quarterback. He's at eight out of 13 for just over 80 yards tonight. This is first and 10 from the level 38. Here's a handoff to Lipsy, gets out over the 40. Then out the 41, picks up two or three yards. Well, the stop by Chris Clark. This pressure defense by Mr. Clark and company has kept Louisville pretty much 
in their grasp all evening long. They haven't broken a very long run. They have not broken a long pass. And uh, they sort of shut this Cardinal offense down. Second and seven from the Louisville 42. Now Nagel on the option doesn't get anything. Met by a host of Spartans. Well, that'll make it third down. And about seven or eight. Yes, sir. It's Mr. Lionel Mayo in on a tackle again. I tell you what, he's all over the field. Senior from Chicago, Illinois. Now, this is a big play for Louisville on the 41-yard line. Third down and eight. With 7.42 to go in the third quarter. He got about nine men up on the line coming with another blitz. And Nagel stands back, lets it go. Complete to Cummings. Big gainer down around the 32-yard line of San Jose State. So Nagel reads the blitz and burns him. Just hits the streak. Let me see. Again. Right. Take a look at it. Just a three-step drop. One, two, three. And it's a sort of a timing pattern. Just hits AC coming, running it, running up the right sideline. Coming hauls it in. Picks up the big first down. He gained 35 yards on that one. AC, he's a happy young man right there. Coming good, in. good block, by the way. It looked as though it was Dawkins coming up to make the block. He's eighth on the all-time receiving list coming into the season at Louisville. Cummings is. Now it is first and ten at the 31 of San Jose State. And we got moving in the line. As Nagel takes a hit. Louisville had uh, ten men moving on that one. Yeah, they did. A legal procedure against the Cardinals. And you can see the reaction there from Howard Snellenberger. Look at the hit that Nagel takes here. <laughs> He's simply he playing with him, isn't he? Playing like a little paper doll. Gets Bob Blitz, the middle guard. Bleich, the middle guard out of San Diego. So it's moved back on the penalty. It is first down and 15 from the 36. Jones and Broomfield are split wide. And here is the pitch. And this is Lipsy trying to make the turn, and he gets a couple of yards. And that is all. Hesh Kolar over there to make the stop. His first name, Hesh, H-E-S-H, -E means respected young warrior in Swahili. And he was a respected young warrior on, the, uh, warrior on that one. <laughs> of course, Hesh is from San Jose. He started the last two seasons at Rover, makes the play there. Second down and 15 for Louisville. We've got Broomfield down here at the bottom of your screen. And the split backfield and Nagel. All kinds of time. Let's a bomb go down to the 20-yard line, and that is complete. And that is Jones that makes the catch. Fred Jones, the junior, 6'1", 185-pounder out of Murray, Kentucky. As we take a look at a little isolation here on Jones, driving the defender off. Defender thinks he's going deep. He just gets past the first down yardage area right there at the 20. And Browning Nagel just absolutely puts the ball on a rope to hit him for the first down. Great, great protection up front by the offensive line and a good shot by Browning. This is an impressive drive now by Louisville as they trail San Jose State 10 to 7. They've got it first down at the San Jose State 20. David appears as though Mr. Number 7 there, Browning Nagel, is starting to get himself in gear a little bit the last uh, couple series. He is now stands on the evening 10 of 15 for 126 yards. Well, he's just had two good passes and now has the Cardinals down on the 20-yard line. Evidently, we've had more problems with the clock, and that is why there's been a little bit of a, a stop here and delay. Now they're ready to go back to play. The 25-second clock is down to 17 seconds. 6.25 in the quarter on the scoreboard clock. This is Lipsy inside the 20. Gets down around the 16-yard line. As Curtis Lipsy on the carry again. He's getting a lot of work tonight at running back. Both number 20s. Number 20 in blue is getting a lot of work, and number 20 in white is getting a lot of work. It's the battle of the 20s. Moving down around six minutes to go. 
Now it is second and seven. The ball at the San Jose State 17. Here it is again to Lipsy trying to get outside the left. A loose one tackler lunges his way inside the 15 to about the 13 yard line. He's got to get to the, about the 10 yard line to pick up a first down. And they're going to spot the ball about the 14 yard line. Now this play is designed to go off tackle. If it's not there it can be bounced outside. Look at the balance the second third and fourth effort by Curtis Lipsy. The ball did not the play was designed as I mentioned to go inside off tackle. It wasn't there so he did bounce it out and did pick up some good yardage as we take a look at one of the San Jose State players that's shaken up. Anthony Washington. That's a, who it appears to be, number 13, Anthony Washington, who is a sophomore, 5'10", 207 pounder from Pasadena. He appears to be all right. The rover comes off. Uh, coming into the game is Pete Bynum. And running back in Lipsy will come off. 16 rushes for 49 yards and a touchdown for Curtis Lipsy tonight. And now Louisville looks at third down and four at the Spartan 14. San Jose State leading 10 to 7. 5.08 to go in the third quarter. Here is the handoff and the carry down around the right side, down into the five yard line. Latrell Ware. And Latrell Ware picks up the first down. It'll be first and goal. Hesh Kolar knocking him out of bounds. Coming right in your living room right here. Latrell Ware puts the ball away, comes around, rumbling around that left end. Big collision there from Hesh Kolar. And I tell you what, Hesh gets up sort of shaking his helmet on that one because that was an awful big collision between Latrell Ware and Hesh Kolar. First and goal for Louisville at the San Jose State three-yard line. Hall and Bynum are in the backfield. Here is the handoff for very little gain going up the middle. That was Bobby Hall, the senior out of Kettering, Ohio. Let's look at it again. Bobby can be used as a fullback or, in this case, a tailback. And he doesn't. He tries to go up and over, but there's a lot of penetration from that defensive front of San Jose State. I don't think there was any gain on that one, David. They've got it on the two-yard line. It is now second and goal for Loyola. There's a the handoff to Lipsy. He doesn't get in. And it will now go to third down and goal. And the Cardinals are looking to the sideline to see what the call will be on third down and goal. Gonzalez is coming into the game for Louisville, along with Jerry Crafts in the line. Cummings and Brom are coming out. Of course, when they big, big, bring big Jerry Crafts in, Jerry's 6'6", 319 pounds. They play that left side. They go with two tight ends of the left. Third down and goal for Louisville. Big, big play for the Cardinals. Here is Nagel. Throws it out of the end zone. Coming in there to put big pressure was the linebacker, Mike Shalaba. And it will go now to fourth down and goal. And Will Wilmsmeyer comes onto the field to try a field goal. This will be his first attempt of the 90 season. Last year he hit two out of three field goals, including a 52-yarder against Virginia. Now this field goal would be to tie the game. There are three minutes and 38 seconds left in the third quarter. As Nagel comes off and Greg Brom is out to hold. Of course, the coaching staff works with the quarterbacks in situations like that, David. They have to get points. Most only co all, all coaching staffs will do that. They have to get points, and by points, we mean either three or the six. Wilmsmeyer, a 19-yard attempt. 
He had plenty of distance on that one right through the middle. And this game is now tied. San Jose State and Louisville are locked up 10 to 10 with three minutes and 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. They got a lot of football to go from San Jose, California. Stay with us on the Cardinal Sports Network. Insider is someone who watches the Lou Holt Show. Lou prepares you and the team for every gridiron event and recaps last week's matchup. The Lou Holt Show premieres Tuesday, September 11, only on Sports Channel America. What's the fastest way to get tickets to the Giants game? Fast? You're right. Yay! Fast Ticketmaster is the fastest way. You got 10 points. Thanks. What does 10 points mean? Nothing. Giant. Giant attitude. Klaus Wellsmeyer has just hit a 19-yard field goal and tied this game 10 to 10 in the third quarter. And Louisville prepares now to kick off to San Jose. As they've got Sheldon Canley back deep, one of the top kick returners in the country, along with Eddie Thomas, number 26. That was Klaus's first field goal attempt of the year. Last year he attempted three, hit two of them, along with 52, as you mentioned, against Virginia. But this is the first year that he is handling both the place kick, kick, kicking and also the punting. See the wind he's kicking against. You can see how the flags up above in the end zone are blowing in this wind. So here's Wells Fire against the wind. Just kicked the field goal against one, and it is taken by Canley around the 10-yard line. He gets up to about maybe the 24 before he is down. Now let's go down the sidelines and have uh, get some comments from Alan Douglas. Alan? Quarterback Brownie Nagel did a tremendous job that last scoring drive of audibleizing. Every play with the draw on the drive, with the exception of two, was an audible. If Brownie can continue to do that and the offensive line can continue to play consistently, Louisville's going to do really well in the last half of this game. Well, that may be true, and if they can continue their drives and move the football against this San Jose State team in the later stages of the game. Here it is, first and ten. Canley is going to throw it. Passes down here, incomplete. That is a big gainer for San Jose State. As Mr. Versatile, or versatility, Canley hits 81. David Blakes, and he brings it all the way up to the Louisville 41-yard line. Well, he had a pass attempt last year, David. It didn't say in the stat book which game it was, but uh, he has thrown a couple from his tailback position. Toss sweep right. He tucks it under like he's going to run a toss sweep. Pulls up. Hits the wide receiver down there, and uh, it's not in the, in the stride. Here's Canley again. Almost breaks around inside the 30 to the 27. San Jose State is just roaring back after that field goal by Klaus Wilmsmeyer tied the game. But I believe we do see a flag. One of those yellow flags down. And it is against San Jose State. So that big run by Canley will be for naught. Holding against San Jose State. And that moves it back to the 42 of Louisville. The Louisville certainly has done a good job containing Sheldon Canley most of the day. And that has been obviously a factor in what the score is right now. Just over three minutes in the quarter, third quarter. And this is first down and 11. Run up the middle for a gain of four or five. That is Hawthorne carrying the ball, and Pat Fitzgerald was there to make the stop for Louisville. Of course, Pat Fitzgerald was number two in tackles uh, in the season of 1989. Had a 107 tackles on the year. 
Schnellenberger facing the sidelines here as we near the end of the third quarter. And it is a tie game. Martini at quarterback. Second and six. And it's knocked down and batted away by Mike Flores. Big play by Flores. Well, the, the senior last, out of Youngstown. The last time they ran that play, I thought he tipped it. And uh, that time he did not, he not only didn't tip it, he bats it down. This is reject right here. Knocks it down, and Great had he play. been able to hang out of that, he possibly could have rumbled down for a score. Good play there, Mr. Flores. On the 37 of Louisville, it'll be third down and six after that big play by Mike Flores. And Martini brings him up for this third and six. Big play. And he's being rushed by Flores, incomplete. So two big plays by Mike Flores from that right defensive tackle or end spot. Gangwar was the man that got his hand on it and tipped it away. But Flores put the pressure on Martini, and it'll bring up fourth down in a punting situation. As we take a look at Flores coming around, tackle Pat Hines and gets to Martini just, just about the time he let the ball go. So the punter, Eric Negre, averaged 37 yards a kick. Buchanan is deep for Louisville. Negre put one down inside the five-yard line the last time he had one of these chances. This is a high one. And this is going to hit right around the goal line and bounce out of the end zone. And so a touchback, and Louisville will come out to the 20-yard line and try to get another offensive drive underway. So the drive is over for San Jose State. Louisville will take over. 2.05 to go in the third quarter. We are tied. This is what it feels like to have an asthma attack. It's like breathing through a very thin straw. Asthma is a serious lung disease that can affect people of all ages. The American Lung Association helps people with asthma learn how they can lead normal lives. Asthma can be controlled. For more information, call your local American Lung Association. It's a matter of life and breath. The American Lung Association, the Christmas seal people. The last time these two teams met, it was a special moment in sports history. Sports Channel brings you three games between the Oakland A's and the Texas Rangers. When heroes like this are playing, you just never know what might happen. Tune in Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Season tickets still available for University of Louisville football this fall. Starting with a home opener next Saturday against Murray State. Call 588-6325. Single game tickets are also available. Let's see if uh, Mr. Browning Nagel can do what Alan Douglas mentioned. Continue to audibleize and take advantage of this blitzing, forcing San Jose State defense. AC Cummings split wide out here to the just below your screen. Nagel with a quick pass and a flag is down. Those are complete out over the 26 yard line on first down. Brumfield made the catch, but Uh, legal motion against the Cardinals is the signal from the referee. It appeared as though Joey Smith was reacting to the audible, moving up into position to become a blocker on that quick butt hook pass. There you go. Take a look at it. But he can't be moving toward the line of scrimmage at the snap, and he was. Correct call is made, and the penalty... First down and 15 from the Louisville 15-yard line. Ware and Lipsy are in the backfield. Nagel is at quarterback. His pass to Cummings is dropped, and you won't see that very often. Up around the 28-yard line. Boy, I tell you, he rifled that ball in there with a lot of authority. He certainly did put it on a rope, and oh, AC wishes he could have this one back. Take a look. It's a quick slant. And he throws this one on a rope, hits right there. Watch AC. He's looking downfield. See him look downfield right there? He said, I shouldn't have done it. I should have looked it in, put the ball away, and then looked downfield to pick up more yardage. He had a lot of open field ahead of him. He saw that. So second down and 15. A minute 
45 as we near the end of the third quarter. Here's Nagel. Complete up over the 20 yard line. Tony Cmac makes the catch, the tight end. But it is uh, still going to be a long way to go here on third down. It'll be third and eight from the Louisville 22 as Schnellenberger looks on. To figure a way to get this offense on track. Get the offense going. Browning was looking downfield to throw the ball for a bigger gain. Wasn't open, so he threw it in the flat to C-Mac. Ken McKay out here. Jones and Broomfield. And here is Nagel. He fumbles the ball. And San Jose State gets it. So a fumble by Nagel and San Jose State will have the ball at the Louisville 20-yard line with 58 seconds left in the third quarter. But you can't fault Browning Nagel for trying to scramble to try to make the big play. He got forced up into the pocket, started to break out to the right, as you can see, and just doesn't put the ball away. He's got it swinging around and just gets the ball knocked away from him. All right, Martini has him up to the line, first and 10 from the Louisville 20-yard line. 58 seconds on the clock in the third quarter, and Martini will throw, goes for the end zone, and complete an intercepted. Louisville comes up with a big interception. Buchanan makes the grab in the end zone. So we continue to have a lot of turnovers. Louisville fumbles it away, and on first down, San Jose State throws an interception in the end zone. Martini, trying to get six, gets nothing. Get set for an explosive week of CFL action. Monday, September 3rd, it's the Battle of Alberta, part one. The Eskimos and Tracy Hamm invade Stampeders territory for a war with Danny Barrett. Thursday, Toronto and Matt Dunnigan launch an air assault when they take on the hard-charging PC Lions. Friday, it's part two of the Battle of Alberta as Calgary clashes with Edmonton. And Sunday, Grey Cup champion Saskatchewan challenges Damon Allen in Ottawa. In September, the action of the WBL playoffs reaches fever pitch with the championship round. The CFL season marches on with 10 exciting contests. It's back to school for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Florida Gators, not to mention the high school game of the week. Plus the return of English League Soccer, the Sports Cream Pro Boxing Tour, Speedway Sunday, and so much more in September, only on Sports Channel America. 53 seconds left in the third quarter. Louisville and San Jose State tied 10 to 10. Here is that last pass from Martini. Right after the turnover, wide open. Coach Shea is going for the throat. He's got his man wide open, but Ray Buchanan comes from his free safety position over to make the interception. He's sort of making like his brother Richard, who is one of the best receivers. As we take a look at Ray, his brother Richard's one of the best receivers in the Big Ten. Brom and Cummings are split out with Nagel still at quarterback. First and 10 for Louisville, and the handoff to Lipsy up over the 20. Spins his way up to about the 24. Oh, Curtis, he's attacking the line of scrimmage. That's what a good tailback should do. Just get up in there, find you a little soft spot, and attack it. Throw your body at it, get what you can get. Moves it out to the 24, second down and six coming up for Louisville. This game has got 30 seconds, and the clock is moving left in the third quarter. Bobby Hall and Lipsy are in the backfield. And here is the pitch to Hall. Coming around the right side, got a couple of blocks over the 25, out up to about the 28 or 9. Short of the first down, it'll bring up third and short. Looks like they're going to mark the ball at the 29-yard line, and that will be the last play of the third quarter. And so we finish three quarters of play in San Jose, California, and Louisville and San Jose State are still tied. It is a 10 to 10 game. Louisville's ball will be come back. A few months ago, I had a hearing problem. Thank God my problem was minor, but it helped me to see something. 
I found out that research is being done that could help practically everyone to hear, including the totally deaf. All this needed is our support. Can you help? This Sunday, strap yourself in for not one, not two, but three exciting NASCAR races. The top drivers will be chasing the checkered flag in this NASCAR triple header. Sunday, the defending Grey Cup champion Saskatchewan Rough Riders and super quarterback Kent Austin defend their home field in this battle with Winnipeg and the awesome Blue Bomber defense. But Brian Holman is receiving a standing ovation. And they are lifting him and carrying him, paying homage to Nolan Ryan. And the Giants win it by a score of six to nothing. Trevor Wilson gets his shutout. And the smile on that man's face tells you the story. One out away from a no-hitter. And he is one happy man. First play of the fourth quarter, we got a tie game. 10-10 between Louisville and San Jose State. Howard Snellenberger, third down and one. The ball at the Louisville 29. And here's the first down. So Louisville picks up the first down. Latrell Ware will pick it up on the pitch. And so the drive for Louisville will stay alive. Good blocking on that right-hand side from McAllister Berkey. Latrell took the pitch, turned the corner, and got, uh, got a big, big first down for the Cardinals as we take a look at the pitch. Good lead block right there. The senior out of Ferguson, Missouri, six feet, 208 pounds. So now it is first down and 10 for Louisville on the 34. Ware and Bynum are in the backfield. And here is the pitch to Ware now to the left side. Makes the turn. Big gainer by Bynum. He comes over midfield down around the 40-yard line. 45-yard line of San Jose State. So Latrell Ware, Paul Franklin, a backup uh, cornerback, was in there to make the play for the Spartans. Good audible by Browning. Switches the whole formation. Good block right there by Bynum. Latrell turns the corner and watch Franklin come in from his boom, his safety position. Absolutely puts the hammer on Latrell Ware. And Franklin's not a very big guy either, only 180 pounds. Okay, that was a game for a first down. Here they come, and it is fumbled back there. Bynum fumbles it, picks it back up, and he's going to be trapped way back inside the 30-yard line. Let's go down to Allen Douglas standing on the sidelines. Beginning of that drive, Coach Snellenberger started to call the plays. He's encouraging his, and the team to pick up the, the intensity and the level of play. It's very important for them right now to overcome this uh, loss that they've just... Uh, witnessed. That's uh, right, Pete Bynum back there deep, and this will back Louisville now up inside the 30-yard line, the ball at the 28, and it will be first down and a long way, about 27. We're in the fourth quarter. There's 14 minutes and 24 seconds on the clock. It is tied. It was tied at halftime, 7-7, seven to seven. and it is now 10-10. The officials have called a timeout for an injury. As we take a look at the stats through three quarters, Louisville is picking up a little bit. Eight turnovers, too, in this game. Louisville still with only 133 yards rushing in this game. And now it is second down and long. Second and 27. Oh, Jones wasn't even looking. It was 
Nagel throws that one incomplete. It'll bring up third and long. That's one of the <laughs> one of the fallacies of audibleization. You know, you you stand in there, you change the plate, the line of scrimmage, and if one of the wide receivers can't hear the audible, doesn't pick it up, as in that case right there, the ball could very well have been intercepted. As we take a look, Browning's going to throw it for a slant in. Jones isn't even looking. He's doing a takeoff. Bynum comes out. This is Broomfield splitting wide out to the right. And this is third and 27 from the 29. Here's Nagel. Incomplete. Throwing it for Lipsy up around the 42 yard line. It would have been well short of the first down. Nowhere close to that. And so we go to fourth down. And Klaus Wilmsmeyer comes in for the punt. Stands in there, throws the ball to Lipsy. It looks as though it went right through his hands. It, it would not have been a first down, but it surely would have given Love a little better field position. So Wilmsmeyer to punt, standing back inside his 15-yard line, and he gets it away under pressure. Good punt. Drives Thomas back inside his 25. Run out of bounds inside the 30-yard line, so San Jose State will take over there with 13 minutes and 42 seconds to go in the ball game. Mel Mills made the knock out of bounds over there for the special teams for the Cardinals. Bumsmeyer has not uh, gotten very good hang time all evening, David. I've got uh, him on a 3.3 second hang time. All right, with 13 minutes and 42 seconds to go in this football game, it is a tie game. We'll be back in a minute. Listen, each year government agencies auction, sell, and liquidate thousands of cars and trucks, and the bidding starts as low as $30. Government vehicles, luxury cars taken from drug dealers, criminals, and thousands more seized, repossessed, sold through bankruptcy proceedings. Now find out how you can grab the car you want at government liquidation and bankruptcy prices. Bid as low as $30 for Porsches, Mercedes, Ferraris, Corvettes, family cars, and trucks. Find out how to get the car you want now. Call 1-900-HOT-AUTO. That's 1-900-468-2886. Just $2 a minute. Pacing the sidelines as Louisville and San Jose State are tied 10 to 10. Acting like maybe his thumb was bothering him. He talked to Dr. Shea on the sidelines just a minute ago. Martini brings out the Spartans first and 10 from their 29 yard line. Still anybody's ball game here tonight in San Jose, California. Martini throws it down incomplete. Well, Louisville got that uh, little wide receiver screen as we take a look at Browning. Dr. Shea is watching him. Matter of fact, he just blocked the pass. He was looking at his thumb during the timeout. I was wondering if he does have some problem with his thumb on his throwing hand. 13 minutes and 38 seconds are left in the game. San Jose State, second and 10 from their 29. Walter Brooks split here to the left. Sheldon Kenley brings it over the 30. Out to about the 33, where Reggie Johnson brings him down. And that will bring up third down and about eight. At that point in time, Coach Snellenberger sends in Ted Washington and Dan Gangware, who's been resting for a couple minutes as we take a look at Coach Shea on the far sideline. Third down and... This is Martini of San Jose State back to throw, and he... I think he got it complete. Short of the first down, just over the 35, 36 yard line to Bobby Blackman. One of those junior college receivers they have here. So they come up short of the first down and with 12.49 left in the game, a tie game seven to seven. It is a punting situation. This is Eric Negre, the junior punter. 
and he will be standing back on his 22 yard line. A.C. Cummings is deep to receive for Louisville. And the punt coming down short will hit at the 40. And is down at about the Louisville 43 yard line. So the Cardinals will take over there. And once again try to get the offense on track. And that is Browning Nagel standing down there on the sidelines talking with Schnellenberger and he will be going back in Pete, to run the offense. It appears as though he will be. Not a very good punt at all, by the way, from Eric McGray. That punt probably only traveled about 20, 25 yards. Not very good hang time as we take a look at Browning coming back in. Apparently it was just a maybe a little bruise or a little tightening of the uh, throwing hand, but he is back in, ready to go. Okay, Browning Nagel has him ready to go. Rick. Rob split to the right side. Here is the pitch, and coming out this way is Latrell Ware. And right now, to find out the latest on Browning Nagel, here's Alan Douglas down on the sidelines. Alan? I just spoke with team doctor Raymond Shea, and he believes that Browning just has a little bit of swelling in his thumb. It really isn't any big injury at all. I think Browning is going to be okay. All right, we go to second down and eight on the short gainer by Latrell Ware. Greg Baum and Jones are the wideouts. And here is the handoff coming up the middle as Lipsy slips and falls out over the 45-yard line of San Jose State. And that should be very close to a first down as they're spotting the ball at the 44 or the 46-yard line. That is a first down for Louisville. I tell you what, it's uh, San Jose State is lucky. It's only a first down because if he doesn't slip right there, he is gone because we had Brom out in front blocking. Could have been six. First down and ten at the San Jose State 46-yard line. Here is Nagel, and he overthrows a little bit wide of Bobby Hall. An incomplete pass will bring up to third down. Well, the Cardinals are still a long way away here from Paydirt, and that's what they're searching for with just 11 minutes and 15 seconds to go in the game. San Jose State defense digging in now, and it is second down and 10. AC Cummings is the wide receiver at the top of your screen, and Eric Broomfield on this near side of the field. And here is Nagel going for Cummings. Broken up and almost intercepted by Thomas. Eddie Thomas breaks it up. You know, Thomas is, uh, was a high school teammate of Curtis Lipsy. They played together on the same high school team in Chicago. Now, Browning audibilizes on this one and hits that same pass pattern. Audibilizes the same pass pattern that they threw to AC earlier in the evening for a big game. That one was slightly under underthrown. I'm wondering if the swelling in the thumb is affecting Browning on his uh, on his passing. Well, it's third down and ten. Cummings is at the top of your screen, and Broomfield is down here at the bottom. Here is Nagel. He's under pressure. He's going to get sacked. Another big play in there by the San Jose State defense. Number 49, Charles Burnham, a reserve linebacker, leading the way, and it'll bring up fourth down. Browning's running for his life again, but he just doesn't quite have that speed to get up and out of there. Mike Powers is down in the bottom of that pile, too, the big defensive, uh, defensive tackle for San Jose State. Here's Wells Myers punt. This is a beautiful punt. Going to try Thomas way back. It's out of the end zone. And so San Jose State will come up with the ball at their own 20. 10 minutes and 27 seconds left in the football game. Louisville and San Jose State are tied 10 to 10.
Maybe someone's trying to tell you something. Hello, everybody. I'm Carl Foster. Join me each week right here on your favorite station for the Tennis Magazine Show, the nation's only total tennis television program. Catch all the exciting serves and volleys each week from the Capriotis to the McEnroes from around the country. The WITA reports, the IBM ATP tour, as well as instructional tips with Spike Gurney and Dr. Jack Grapple, and all the latest news from passing shots. It's all right here on the Tennis Magazine Show. Well, this thing's winding down. To could be a thriller as we ended up with 10.27 to go, and it's tied 10 to 10. San Jose State at their 21st down and 10. Waiting for the signal to put the ball in play. Martini is the quarterback. He's gone all the way for San Jose State. Sheldon Canley picks up a couple around the right side. Mark Sander there, who's intercepted two passes on the night to knock him out of bounds. The enforcer, senior, 6'2", 229 pound Sanders from Louisville to Sales High School, makes the play on Sheldon Canley after a four-yard gain. Well, this continues to be pretty much a battle of the two defenses, as both offenses have been played by turnovers and penalties. And now Martini on second down to Canley. He's going nowhere. Getting up in there is Pat Fitzgerald. Number 47 out of Springfield, Illinois. 6'4", 222-pound senior for Louisville. And that will now send it to third down and six for San Jose State. We're just now moving inside 10 minutes in the football game. And this is third and six. Not going to get the first down. Stopped short of that at about the 28-yard line by Mark Sander. So a big play by Sander, and it'll be San Jose State now turning the ball back to Louisville. We might add another big play by Mark Sander there. I tell you what, if he doesn't make the play, because uh, Canley will pick up that first down if he doesn't make that play. It looks as though there's a Louisville player down it's, on the playing it's, surface. Uh, Mike Flores that's being attended to now down around the 30 yard line after that last play. Appears to be okay coming off under his own power. The freshman uh, defensive back Kevin Gaines is in the game now on this punting situation. The deep man is Cummings, A.C. Cummings. He has been the punt returner tonight for most of the way for Louisville. Eric McRae will punt it away on fourth down and two. Just over nine minutes left in the game. Terrible punt. Shanks went off and it just gets over midfield down around the Louisville 48 yard line. Another good break for the Louisville offense. They will have good field position with just under nine minutes left to go in the first half. Or rather in the ball game. Let's recap the scoring. Louisville got on the board first when Lipsy scored from a yard out and they led seven to nothing. Second quarter, San Jose State tied it when Martini, on a long run, tied the game going into halftime. In the third quarter, De La Flor, a 37-yard field goal for the Spartans and they led 10 to seven. And then Wilmsmeyer connects from 19 yards and it's a tie game. And this is a handoff level on first down and 10. Dawkins brings it out over midfield. Good gainer by Dawkins, about five or six yards. He moves it out just shy of the Sta uh, San Jose State 45-yard line. Boy, he's a strong runner. He's got the ability to, to break tackles. He has the ability to make people miss him. And I like the way he runs the ball, David. That was Ralph Dawkins on that run. Now, here is second down. Second down and four. Here comes Dawkins around the right side. Knocked out of bounds for a first down up around the 40-yard line. So Dawkins picks up a first down, and Louisville will have it first and 10 now at the San Jose State 39. Good block out in front of him. 
clearing the way so that Dawkins can pick up that first down. Good block on that whole right side, I might add. Dawkins, a redshirt freshman out of Jacksonville, 5'9", 205. Joey Smith and Lipsy. Joey Smith and Ware, or Lipsy and Ware now are in the Louisville backfield. First and 10 from the 40. Here is Lipsy, and he just gets back to the line of scrimmage. And the Spartan defense stopping there. Everett Lampkins in on the tackle. The leading tackler for them last year. He's first team all Big West in 1989, making the stop on Curtis Lipsy. Second down and 11 as he lost a yard back to the 40. All the twists and stunts and different fronts that San Jose State has given the Louisville offensive line, have, they've given them some problems with that. They do like to twist, they do like to stunt. Here they look like they're coming on a blitz in this particular down right here. This is second down and 11 from the San Jose State 40. And this is where around the left side for a five or six out over the 35 inside the 34. As Freddie Smith came over from the right corner to make the stop for San Jose State. The clock becomes more and more of a factor in this game. Seven minutes and 18 seconds to go in the game. Good downfield block right there by Broomfield. So it's very important. Any big run that you see is usually instituted by a downfield block by either an offside lineman or, or a receiver. Third down. And here comes Latrell Ware, and he's got nowhere to go. He's stopped back on the 32. And now you come to decision time. It'll be fourth down with six minutes and 48 seconds in the game. And the official is calling a timeout. We have an injured player on the field from San Jose State as Browning Nagel is now over on the Louisville sideline to confer. As we were watching practice on Friday, we did notice that Mr. Wilmsmeyer booted a 60-yarder. Of course, if the, uh, they do attempt to go for a field goal here, it will not be near 60. It looks as though it'll be in the uh, 46 to 47-yard range. Well, they've got Wilmsmeyer out on the field. They're going to put the tee down at about the 38-yard line. So we're looking at a 48-yard field goal attempt from the right side hash mark by Wilmsmeyer. And the wind, as we have referred to it all night, blowing in will be at his back. So the wind is in his favor. And you go back to the pregame in the locker room when Howard Schnellenberger was saying he wanted to defer to start the game. He wanted the wind at his back in the fourth quarter, and that's what he's got. He's got Wilmsmeyer now with a wind at his back and a field goal attempt of about 48 yards here that could break up a tie game with 6.45 to go. Of course, when you have a strong defense like Louisville does and you win the toss, you can defer and give the other guy the ball so that you have it. You know, you have the choice in the fourth quarter. Wilmsmeyer had a 52-yard field goal against Virginia a year ago. This is a 48-yarder with six and a half minutes to go. It's long enough, but it's no good. Drive to the right. So Wilmsmeyer fails to connect from 48 yards, and we remain tied at 10 to 10 with six and a half minutes to go. As we look at Klaus on the sideline after failing to connect on that field goal. So it remains 10 to 10. We'll be back as San Jose State takes over the ball after this. Sports Channel America is the home of the seven-day weekend. We've got the gridiron covered with the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Canadian Football League. The Iceman Ring Supreme with our exclusive coverage of the National Hockey League. The U.S. Olympic Showcase, High School Game of the Week, Speedway Sunday, the Pro Boxing Tour, and much more. Sizzling professional and amateur sports, 365 days a year. The seven-day weekend is here, only on the Sports Channel America Network. The last time these two teams met, it was a special moment in sports history. Sports Channel brings you three games between the Oakland A's and the Texas Rangers. When heroes like this are playing, you just never know what might happen.
Tune in Sunday afternoon at 1 o'clock. Two left in the game. Klaus Wilmsmeyer right here with a 48-yard field goal attempt that was no good, Pete. He's got to follow through, David. he got to follow through with that right foot all the way toward the goalpost, towards your point of aim, your target. As all he did was bring his foot up barely to his left knee. Consequently, the ball goes off to the right. He sort of pushed it, as we would say a golfer would push. Spark golfer. first and 10 from there, 32. Martini coming out of the pocket. He is hit and knocked down and out of bounds around the 36-yard line by Fitzgerald. A gain of about four yards. Let's pause five seconds so our stations can identify themselves. Gain of four on that play will bring up second down and six. San Jose State as we are live in San Jose, California. The opening game of the 90 football season is all tied 10 to 10. Second down six, Sheldon Canley. It's over the 40, he's got the first down. Moves up around the 43 yard line. Sheldon Canley picks up the first down, a game of about seven. And the clock now shows five minutes and 40 seconds. As the pressure shifts to the Louisville defense, Reggie Johnson making the stop on Canley. Of course, Canley's first down jaunt was only put in place by the run that Martini had on the previous play, and that was the big, I thought, David, the big factor in the first half where Martini scrambled so well and did such a good job picking up first downs for San Jose State. Inside five and a half minutes, here's Canley coming around this uh, left side, and he digs for a couple of more yards out over the 45 to the 46. Mark Sander, the first man in on the stop for Louisville. Brian Hayes also in on the tackle. 5.08. The clock is running down to the five minute mark. A 10 to 10 game, and Louisville and San Jose State both trying to get some offense working in this first game of the season. Now the Spartans, as Martini throws incomplete. So that'll stop the clock with 4.42 to go. And that'll bring third down. Excellent coverage by the Louisville defense. Good pressure by Dan Gangware on Martini and the coverage back there, David, was good where they didn't have, he didn't have anywhere to throw. So he just opted to throw the ball into the dirt, throw it away, avoid the sack. So Schnellenberger and the Cardinals are looking at third down and eight. As Martini has three receivers out to the right side, he's hit as he throws the ball, and the whistle sounding an incomplete pass. So it goes to fourth down, and Louisville will get the ball back with over four minutes to go in the game. Four minutes and 38 seconds at this point. Great pressure up front as we see the Louisville defense coming in there. I believe that was 56 Mel Mills that got a hand on him. It sure was. Got a hand on the uh, quarterback just right there, just as he was throwing. If Ted him. Washington would have looked up, he could have had an interception. Had him scissored there. Okay, Eric Negray will punt, standing back at his 31-yard line. This is a pretty good high punt. A.C. Cummings has it at his 15, and that's where Louisville will take over. With four minutes and 31 seconds left in the game, Louisville takes over at their own 15-yard line, and Browning Nagel comes back in at quarterback as he talks to Howard Snellenberger on the sidelines. You did mention good punt by Negre. That ball had a hang time of 4.5, uh, kicked it downfield about 37 or 38 yards, and it did allow the coverage to get underneath it so that Cummings could not run it back. Good punt. And now Loyola will test that Spartan defense and secondary here. A.C. Cummings and Broomfield are the wideouts. Here is Nagel looking for an open man. He's got him. Hits Ken McKay up over the 20-yard line for a gain of about five. That'll bring up second down for the Cardinals. As McKay, the senior tight end, played behind Fortune in the past few years, a starter this year. 
tight end delay. He starts from his tight end position toward the sidelines. They let the running backs clear the linebackers out. Then he comes back underneath that soft spot. Nagel's numbers on the day. And this is second down. They keep it on the ground. It may have been a face mask down there. I don't know. But I didn't see a flag go down. I do see a flag, I believe, now. I believe I do. Yes, we do. A flag down on the 22-yard line. Yeah. Dawkins does not go down that fast because he is a strong, strong runner. Now, when you do grab a guy by the face mask, you can bring him down real good. Watch this. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if that was a face mask. Yeah. Unless he got him, David, by the back opening of the helmet. I was going to say, down. pulling by the helmet, I believe. So that'll make it first down and 10 from the Cardinal 27-yard line. Three minutes and 37 seconds in the game. We're tied at 10. Big hit right there by Schlava. The returning uh, starting linebacker that makes the hit there and so Louisville now will come up on a long third down or second down all these linebackers Slava included all about 5'11 and 5'10 six foot they all look like Nick Bonacati's out there here comes Slava right up there Poof. comes up makes the play makes a tackle right there uh, Dawkins goes down and so it is second down and 11 two minutes and 58 seconds in the game, and that is another sack. Steve Heaver, number 48, comes in from the linebacker spot. Heaver plays behind Lampkins at linebacker, and he makes the big, big play for the defense as Nagel will go off the field. Yeah, we have a missed blocking assignment down in the trenches where Heaver comes totally free. He plays that inside linebacker. He just dropped down as a down lineman, came free on the blitz. Two minutes and 22 seconds are left. This is third down and 20 for Louisville. Backed up at their own 17-yard line. And here goes Nagel. He's looking deep. He's coming down here for Broomfield and overthrows him. And so with just over two minutes to go in the game, two minutes and five seconds, Royville will have to punt it away. Big punting situation here for Charles Wimsmeyer. If he could nail one at this point in time and pin San Jose back, that'd be a big punt for the Cardinals. Wimsmeyer standing back on his two-yard line. He gets a good one out. It's going to come up over midfield. It is taken by Thomas. It is 45. And Thomas is knocked down over midfield around the Louisville 46 yard line. So that'll still is very good field position for San Jose State with a minute 54 to go. It may all come down to the toe of De La Flor, who's already missed one and made one in this game tonight. You know, kicking game, that always is uh, the deciding factor in a, in a close ball game. The hang time on that one was only 3.2 seconds, which did allow the return man to get the ball back into Louisville territory. Here it is on first and 10. Hamley, he's got some running room, and he's got a first down down around the Louisville 35-yard line. First down for San Jose State as Mr. Canley. Goes by one of the nicknames they have for him is Cool Daddy, and he was very cool on that run. He's picking up those key chunks of yards when they need him the most. Cool Daddy was dancing on that one, wasn't he? And it's the first down, a minute and 35 are left in this game at the Louisville 35, and we got flags. I believe number 67, Pat Hines, the left offensive tackle the iron man of the 8 1989 san jose state team legal procedure against san jose state moves it back to the 40.
This game is 10 to 10 with a minute and 30 seconds to go. The clock starts running. Terry Shea, his first game as a head coach of San Jose State, was an assistant here from 84 to 86. And now Martini. Here's the pitch. They're going to go to Canley, and he's going to get only a couple of yards over the 40. And the clock now moves down inside a minute 10. So San Jose State has taken a timeout. A timeout on the field. A minute and nine seconds to go. Louisville and San Jose State are tied. Hi, I'm Will Clark. I grew up loving baseball. We always had a place to play. I also grew up loving music, but finding a place to play wasn't easy. That's why the San Francisco Community Music Center is so important. For over 65 years, it's given music lovers of all styles and ages a place to play. Check out the San Francisco Community Music Center. You'll gain a new appreciation like I did. for an explosive week of CFL action. Monday, September 3rd, it's the Battle of Alberta, Part 1. The Eskimos and Tracy Hamm invade Stampeders territory for a war with Danny Barrett. Thursday, Toronto and Matt Dunnigan launch an air assault when they take on the hard-charging PC Lions. Friday, it's Part 2 of the Battle of Alberta. the situation. Louisville and San Jose State are tied. There's a minute nine to go. San Jose State has the ball. Second down and 13 at the 38 of Louisville. Canley, boom, he's hit. Bino is down there. And Flores to make the stop inside the 35, about the 34-yard line. So that now will bring up a third down situation for San Jose State. Raul coming out of his strong side safety position. As we take a look at Canley sweeping the left side, here comes Earl Six. Boom! Puts the hat right on the ball. I tell you what, has an awful good job of hanging on to that football by Sheldon Canley. The clock in the lower right part of your screen, 34 seconds and counting. This is third down and nine. Big play. Martini lost it over the middle, complete to Canley. Canley down to about the 12, 15 yard line. 16 yard line he is brought down well Ralph Martini makes another big play for San Jose State and this one could be costly for Louisville as San Jose State takes a timeout they stop the clock with 22 seconds to go Louisville comes on a blitz here David they go man to man against all the receivers you see the little touch passes all he did was flip it right across the line of scrimmage right there as we take a look where Canley just slides right out <laughs> that's not a tough one to complete not a tough one at all to complete Reggie Johnson, Reggie Johnson right was probably had man to man on Canley coming out and did slip and Canley obviously does pick up a first down the ball is set sort of perfectly right in the middle of the field at about the 16 and a half yard line and 22 seconds are all that remain in the game that is tied 10 to 10. Mark Sander and Pat Fitzgerald come onto the field. Sander will call the defensive signal. Louisville with three timeouts left. San Jose State one to go. And there are 22 seconds to go in the game. And Howard Snellenberger who saw so many games last season go down to the last play. Certainly, this is not the kind of situation that you want to find yourself in. With just 22 seconds to go, it's all tied. But nobody really knows just how good this field goal kicker is for San Jose State. As Canley picks up nothing, maybe a yard. And the clock now comes down inside 15 seconds. It is still running at 11 seconds. San Jose State has one timeout left, and they take it. 10 seconds to go. I believe Louisville took that time out. Uh, Louisville did. You're right. David, they uh, they did want to stop the clock because you never know. I mean, this this thing could be blocked. The, uh, he could miss it. And if there's no time left, 
Louisville won't have a shot at getting down to take a look, uh, take a shot of the field goal themselves as we take a look at Raul De La Fleur. He's a junior and out of a junior college, 5'8", 190 pounds. And even the people at San Jose State, if you ask them, what about your kicker? They said, we don't know. He just got to campus a few weeks ago. And uh, so the first game that he plays in, he's put in a very, very stressful situation. A lot of pressure on somebody who's just playing in his first major college football game. You know, what the heck? I just I decided to go to San Jose, man. <laughs> I don't want to come over here and get put in this situation where I've got to win the ball game. I just want to have a little fun. Yeah, go out for the team. Well, Terry Shea's uh, made his decision on what play will he will go with here on second down. It'll be second and nine. The ball is on the Louisville 15-yard line with 10 seconds to go. Well, I wouldn't be surprised at all to see San Jose State line up to kick it on third down, especially with after this play there be less than five seconds to go. Well, I think you're right. Martini just moves it a little bit more towards the center, maybe picks up a yard down around the 15 yard line. And they stop the clock with a timeout, two seconds left. And De La Fleur comes out. Two seconds to go. This game is 10 to 10. It has been a game, a night of frustration for the U of L offense. It's been a night of many turnovers and penalties in this opening game. And Howard Snellenberger is calling his defense over to the sideline. He wants to talk to them. Of course, the thing they want to do is block it. That's exactly right. I mean, you got to pull out the old 11-man block at this point in time. And of course, after uh, after a field goal attempt is blocked, it can be advanced. Well, you never know. <laughs> you never know. Hopkins are down to that, and wilder things have happened in this game. It certainly, it certainly have. Two seconds to go, and they're also going to let this De La Fleur kid think about it a little bit. He's standing out there all by himself. The the rest of the kicking team from San Jose State have gone over and huddled up. He stands by himself and will be kicking it into the wind if from this distance that will have that much effect. The yard, the line of scrimmage is the 15, just inside the 15 yard line. Ball be snapped back seven yards, placed in 22. Of course, you have to add the additional 10 yards in the end zone as we take a look at Coach Dellenberger putting the ice on him again. Another timeout. <laughs> Uses up, I think it's his last timeout, and that'll just give uh, Raul then much more time to think about it. So the psychology and the strategy continues here. As Louisville has its back against the wall in a tie game, 10 to 10, with two seconds to go on the clock. Next week, we'll be on the air at 11 p.m. Eastern Time on the Cardinal Sports Network as the Cardinals open up at Cardinal Stadium in the home opener against Murray State. Then on the 15th of September, the second home game of the year, it will be the Kansas Jayhawks coming into Cardinal Stadium. Then back-to-back -back road games at West Virginia on the 22nd and at Southern Mississippi. And we'll be on the air live that night at 8 o'clock on September the 29th. And so Raul De La Flor has had several minutes here <laughs> to contemplate this field goal attempt. The old ice trick. Well, let's see if it worked. Well, it's going to be about a 32-yard field goal attempt. And Louisville will come out. Here it is. It's blocked. Louisville blocks the field goal attempt, and they come up with the ball. The time has expired. And they have escaped. They have escaped. There is down flag. on the field. There is a flag. Let's see what they're going to call, Pete, because the the kick was blocked. The flag was thrown down around the 30-yard line. They're going to call something according to the reaction from San Jose State against Louisville. Hold it. Now, is that holding after the block? 
or holding on the block at, on the uh, field goal attempt. Because if it was holding after the ball was blocked, in other words, trying to keep one of the San Jose State players from recovering the fumble, it will be placed where the ball was eventually recovered and it'll be a much, much longer field goal attempt. But if it was holding during the kick itself, the ball will go back with the penalty and be a very short attempt. As the officials huddle, there is no time left on the clock. Now they're moving back downfield around the original line of scrimmage, which was at the 15-yard line. I've seen no signal to indicate what they're going to do here. The only signal they have given us is a holding signal. And of course, I'm sure Coach Stellenberger wants to talk to this young man, referee Tony Correnti. Well, as he discusses it with Stellenberger, the, the football is still out at the 15-yard line, the original line of scrimmage. Good long well, he is not pleased with that decision. Could block this one, Dave. Only block it up in the air, and then pick it off. Oh, that made it down. How about this? Holding on, Louisville. No time left on the clock. I mean, this is point blank. Seven-yard line is the line of scrimmage, and so De La Fleur gets another shot at this thing from a closer range. He's got the ball. Uh, at about the nine yard line, ninth, or rather the 14 yard line, 24 yard field goal attempt. Louisville blocked again. How about that? How about it? Louisville blocks it again. And Howard Stellenberger and the Louisville Cardinals have escaped death twice here in San Jose, California. This game ends in a 10 to 10 tie. And Terry Shea walks off, had two opportunities in the last two seconds of this game, got a big, big break on that holding penalty against Louisville, and the Cardinal defense, the special teams, have saved the defeat. Well, the snap back from Rock Pifferini, who is a backup tight end, was high. It was up above the shoulders of the holder, Mike Jordan, who is a backup quarterback. He did get it down, but the, it threw the timing off. And uh, uh, consequently, Louisville did have that little extra bit of time to come in and block the second field goal attempt. We'll be back in a minute as Louisville and San Jose State have ended up in a 10 to 10 tie here in San Jose, California. Everyone is always confusing me with that other Roger Craig. We both work for teams in San Francisco, so he's the one that plays football. We're both good looking guys, but he's the one who made the poster. We both watch Sports Channel, but he's the one who's got his own show. This football season, turn to Sports Channel every week for Roger Craig's 49ers show. In September, the action of the WBL playoffs reaches fever pitch with the championship round. The CFL season marches on with 10 exciting contests. 
It's back to school for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Florida Gators, not to mention the high school game of the week. Plus, the return of English League Soccer, the Sports Cream Pro Boxing Tour, Speedway Sunday, and so much more in September, only on Sports Channel America. Do you need a car? Listen, each year government agencies auction, sell, and liquidate thousands of cars and trucks, and the bidding starts as low as $30. Government vehicles, luxury cars taken from drug dealers, criminals, and thousands more seized, repossessed, sold through bankruptcy proceedings. Now find out how you can grab the car you want at government liquidation and bankruptcy prices. Bid as low as $30 for Porsches, Mercedes, Ferraris, Corvettes, family cars, and trucks. Find out how to get the car you want now. Call 1-900-HOT-AUTO. That's 1-900-468-2886. Just $2 a minute. Well, Louisville has tied San Jose State in the season opener 10 to 10. And what a finish we had to this game, Pete Compizzi. As there were two seconds left on the clock, and De La Rule had a field goal attempt that evidently was blocked. He missed that one. There was a penalty, a holding penalty against Louisville with no time left on the clock. And they moved the ball closer with the penalty. He only had a very short chip shot to go. And with no time on the clock, last play of the game. Last play of the game, the snap from Pifferini was high. I think we'll see it on a replay here in a moment. But it was high up over his shoulder. And he couldn't quite get it down as we take a look at Coach Stellenberger trying to call a timeout. And I believe that was uh, before the original uh, field goal attempt because Louisville is out of timeouts at the last. At that All last right, that point. was before the second one, they say. But here, you're right with that snap was high. The snap was high. And the placement then was out of, out of sync, out of time, and the timing of the kick was out of sync and out of time, and therefore the ball just goes off to the right. Another angle on it here, trying to see if anybody got a hand on it. I don't believe so, David. I think the ball just went, you know, the timing was off, and he couldn't get down into it, and uh, the ball went off to the right, so I think he just missed it. It's because of the bad snap from Pifferini. Well, it came down to the very last seconds of the game before we decided it. Uh, it was tied at 7-7 seven to seven at halftime, and then it uh, went through most of the second half, tied up 10-10. Ten to ten. Neither team really could get their offense uh, motoring in this opener. Yeah, a lot of mistakes on both sides of the ball. Both, side, both teams, uh, being the first game, made a, a, an inordinate amount of mistakes. But uh, I tell you what, San Jose State, with all the uh, junior college players that they recruited, with uh, the new coach coming in at, at the end of spring football practice, I think you got to take your hand, hats off to San Jose State and uh, you know congratulate them for the tie. It's got to be somewhat of a moral victory for Coach Shea and his, and his staff. Well, I'm sure that uh, it may be, and yet it was kind of demoralizing to have two short field goal tries like that inside the last few seconds of a game and, and end up not being able to win it. Yeah, because when you're sitting there right there at point blank, you know, you got to think it's a it's a chip shot. You know, it's an automatic. But uh, obviously it was not, and uh, uh, the game do does end at 10 to 10. So we go back to uh, to Louisville with uh, with a tie. OK well this game ends up in a tie the opening game of the 90 season in San Jose California the Louisville Cardinals 10 the San Jose State Spartans 10. And so a tie game in the opener next week the Cardinals open at home against Murray State. We'll see you then and after that we'll have coverage of the Kansas game and then on the road at West Virginia and live from Southern Mississippi on September the 29th. All coming your way here on the Cardinal Sports Network. The executive producer of tonight's game has been Roy Hanlon and Gary Bockhorst. The producer has been Chris DeMeo. And our director, Lou Renoni. And on behalf of Pete Compizzi and Alan Douglas, so long, everybody, from San Jose. Equally by the French and British governments. We first of all tried to get America to join with us, but they wouldn't have it. They were only interested in Mark III. The speed of the aircraft, odd enough, was fixed by the materials used in the aircraft construction. The night alloys deteriorate with increasing temperature, and at the temperature of about 120 degrees is about the limit of deterioration that you can stand over the life of an airplane. At 120 degrees, temperature rise corresponds to Mark II. So Mark II becomes the highest speed that uh, the airplane should be allowed to fly. 
We never understood why the Americans wanted to go at Mark III. It was altogether too difficult. Building Concord in two countries speaking two different languages was difficult enough. France and Britain both had assembly lines, and the parts had to be ferried between the various factories in the two countries in an extraordinary aircraft, the Super Guppy, a converted Boeing Stratocruiser. It hinged in the middle of a cavernous hole. Concord was built amid continuous controversy. Development costs rose to over five times the original estimate. When the prototypes were rolled out in 1967, there were already doubts about its economic viability. But they were largely ignored as the first flight approached and there was a feeling of enormous pride in the technical achievement. airlines showed great interest. Once again it seemed that they would have to buy Concords and go supersonic to compete for the VIP passengers on the Atlantic. Behind the public relations exercise, French and British test pilots were working up for their first flights on simulators. The simulator gave us ideas that in one or two areas the airplane was difficult. And as it turned out, the aeroplane actually was very much easier to fly, which was one of the pleasant surprises, which came quite quickly, obviously. Brian Trumshaw and his crew of six are taxiing towards the turning circle. Oh, God, there was a... The first flight on 002 was quite exciting because we'd had some failures of our airspeed indicator. So having got it fixed, I thought, well, if it works this time, we'll go. And that's what we did. into firm orders. In 1973, the massive increase in the price of oil cast further doubt on its economic viability. And then, it was barred from operating on the route it was built for, the Atlantic. That abomination will never, never land at JFK Airport. The building shook. I held my ears. We dread one flight over our heads. If the French and the British made a mistake with this plane, we're sorry for them. But we do not want to and should not be forced to live under these conditions in the flight paths to Kennedy. I'm quite clear in my mind that if the American SST had survived, then the opposition on grounds of environmental issues would have been totally different. They would have been suppressed, and I will always be convinced that that was the, the case. Only Britain and France bought Concorde. Sixteen aircraft were built. The first supersonic services were to South America and the Middle East in 1976. The following year, the American authorities let it land in the United States, and Concorde began carrying passengers across the Atlantic. In speed, Concorde has no rival. It routinely carries passengers over the Atlantic as fast as a bullet. But it has a rarer quality, the means to inspire. After years in service, heads still turn when it flies and people are moved by its grace and beauty.
gentlemen, it's Captain Walpole up at 28 pounds feet now, just coming up over the Bristol Channel. And it's uh, over the channel that we'll be carrying out the transition from subsonic to supersonic flight. That's just 10 miles away from here. And you'll be able to follow the acceleration on the flight information system from the front of the two cabins as the aircraft accelerates smoothly through Mark 1, the speed of sound. We'll be achieving Mark 2 as we pass through 50,000 feet. And we'll be putting that little lot together in just 30 seconds from now. We have got the people who are prepared to pay the premium rates for Concorde. And bear in mind that Concorde saves them time and saves them condition. And there is one thing that you cannot buy in life, and that is time. of American manufacturers in selling long-haul aircraft. 20 years after the first jumbo jet was rolled out, the latest model, the 747-400, was given the same spectacular treatment. It'll be dominating the Atlantic well into the next century. The basic design has been improved. It can carry more passengers over longer distances. By keeping fares low, the Jumbo has become the people's airplane, bringing worldwide travel to a whole generation. The price is around $120 million, but Bill Allen's gamble is still paying dividends. Over 100 aircraft had been ordered before the first flight. But the first signs of a new European challenge to American dominance are at hand. legacy of cooperation between European nations has borne fruit in the Airbus Consortium. All the Airbus aircraft are collaborative aircraft, and that means the bits and pieces come together from the, the four partners. Uh, we make the wing, for example, in Britain. The Germans make the fuselage, the French make the flight deck, the Spaniards make the tailplane, and they're joined together in Toulouse. We started right from scratch uh, because we had to realize a European product meeting the world airline demands and we took uh, in certain areas a daring type of approach. Uh, we decided to look for a high capacity uh, airplanes serving short and medium haul ranges with two engines only, which certainly at that time was one of the most daring approaches uh, that were ever done in that field. The latest Airbus, the A320, is too small for the Atlantic, but it is part of a family of airliners, and its larger stable mate, the A340, with four engines, is destined for the Atlantic route. Once again, Europe has concentrated on advanced technical concepts. The aircraft is controlled by computers, the control column has been replaced by a side stick. The system is called fly-by-wire. This is uh, the beginning of what would be a, a classic storm maneuver. And now as far as the fly-by-wire is concerned, I simply pull pull-up elevator and maintain it. And the system completely looks after the airplane uh, on its own. There we are with 28 uh, degrees of pitch attitude speed uh, reducing to uh, about 90 knots at the moment. The angle of attack is stabilizing at uh, 17 degrees. Uh, that's the still warning which is cut in there for the moment. And the airplane is now stable. And we have a stable altitude, stable pitch attitude. Speed is 94 knots. You may see it moving very slightly uh, as the system takes care of the little bits of turbulence that we have here at 10,000 feet.
competition to sell aircraft is intense. One of the world's foremost arenas is the Paris Air Show. Manufacturers come to close deals worth hundreds of millions of dollars. And uh, we would like to replace those aircraft for a new type, a uh, new generation type of aircraft. And we would like to know uh, really what are advantages over the competition. I believe we have very significant advantages over the competition. 7J7 interior is based on a 188-inch cabin that is 32 inches wider than the Airbus A320. And it's 10 inches narrower than our own 767. We have a personal entertainment system in the back of every seat. So you can select a TV, stereo, or other information that's available. Air shows are just a focus for the manufacturers. The real battle for sales goes on all the year round. It has to be recognized that uh, Airbus industry practically has all new products. Uh, compared, for instance, to the United States, uh, to our competitors who at present make all their commercial successes based on quite oldish types of airplanes which were designed 20 to 25 years ago. The next great step for mankind in commercial aviation could be into space. America has put national resources behind its national aerospace plane. Europe has designs for a comparable machine. The question is, does mankind need to take that step? I don't believe there's much farther to go inside the atmosphere because of the limitations imposed by the atmosphere itself. The environment won't tolerate noise to the levels that people once dismissed as not being important. I mean, I can't imagine that I would like to live in a world that was absolutely filled with sonic and continuous sonic booms, for example. Then we have to go outside the Earth's atmosphere. We have to go exo-atmospheric. Whoever gets there first, I believe, and is capable of developing this uh, system, uh, should have a world lead, the kind of world lead that we should have had with comets if we got it right. And we could have had up to a point with Concorde, but there is another great opportunity coming. Many people believe that a space liner can only be built with global cooperation. The reason is cost. The days when Bill Allen and Juan Tripp gambled on the future are over. Well, the goalposts, I think, have changed in the sense that the product has got to make economic sense first. Just because you can do it technologically uh, will not be good enough. It was probably good enough for the 747 that you could do it technologically, therefore you did it, uh, which essentially is a carryover of the barnstorming uh, mentality of the air transport and the air manufacturing industry from the 20s on. That has changed in that it's become a business, and businessmen run the businesses. Boeing has been in the business a long time. With half a century of experience, their view of the future is conservative but confident. I think Boeing has more technology than Airbus. They just don't advertise it. Fly-by-wire is, is way overstated as to the benefits that you get economically. And uh, nobody's going to buy an airplane just because it has fly-by-wire and another one doesn't. The phenomenal step that occurred from the piston engine propeller airplane to the jet, I don't see repeating. Uh, there'll be a lot of arm waving, but fundamentally, uh, there will be improvements on what we have today. I would love dearly for the vast majority of people say what they really want to do is fly on a Boeing airplane. In fact, when you come down a jetway in a typical modern airport, it's very difficult to tell what kind of airplane you're on. I suppose that's one of the prices of success. Uh, you know, if we only sold three airplanes, it'd be a very glamorous thing, because only a few people would ever get to do it. We've now got over 5,000 jet transports, and we move millions and millions of people. And that, by its very definition, takes some of the glamour out, because everybody does it.